Hello everyone, my name is Alex Alvarez and um, I will be showcasing to, uh, to you today my uh, one of my art forms of shell carving. I've been uh, carving professionally now for just over 10 years and uh, I've learned a lot um, and I'm very very happy to share with uh, what I've learned with you all today. Uh, shell carving is one of the uh, the world's oldest art forms but more specifically uh, it is the original art form of the indigenous americas i say americas because uh shell carving was found not only here in the united states with the uh the southeastern indian tribes but also down into uh the caribbean uh central central america as well as northern south america as well that's a gift uh, that a lot of those indigenous indigenous tribes uh shared with the world and so you actually see a lot of the uh the pattern is replicated from region to region. Um, it's been uh, very, very neat to kind of uh, connect the dots between um, these regions, and it ultimately led to the, the theory that, you know, just because these ancient people did not have vehicles like planes and cars, they still interacted with one another on a regular basis, be it waterways to, you know, canoes and boats and things like that, as well as walking on land. Um, and you see ideas from shell carving shared from region to region. Um, you know, some of the things from Central from, from Central America and Honduras and Guatemala, as well as uh, the Mayan people in Mexico are the same motifs that you see in Southeastern Indian art uh, and from Alabama and Southern Tennessee. So it's, uh, it's been a really neat journey. Um, and I'm very, very happy to kind of show you what a little bit I know about the, uh, about the art form. Um, you know, as everything, everything evolves, everything, n nothing stays the same. And so even the methods that uh, we use to carve shell today, uh, you know, are not the way that our ancestors carved a long time ago. So I want to have a couple examples I want to show you. Uh, so this is called a lightning whelk. Lightning whelk is um, the original shell that the Creeks and other Southeastern peoples used. It is the only shell in the world that, that has a counterclockwise spiral. Uh, all other univalves, so a univalve is a shell, is a mollusk that has one shell. A bivalve is a mollusk that opens up like a clam, an oyster, uh, something like that, or a mussel. So it's the only uh, univalve in the entire world that spins counterclockwise. It's just like how uh, Southeastern Indians dance. So that's, that's the direction of nature. If you can kind of see, it kind of goes like that. Um, this shell, uh, the, the creature that lives inside this shell, is he grows this shell. It's not like a hermit crab where they, uh, they come and inhabit an empty shell. They actually grow this. It's a very, very hard material. These guys can get up to 20, 25 pounds if they're left out in the wild for a very, very long time. Um, they are predators. They are carnivorous animals so even though they don't have uh you know physical legs or can move fast when they when they find a bed of, of uh, uh um starfish or sea urchins or scallops what they'll do is they put that they have a one big giant mussel and then they'll crush that shell and then ingest the ingest the meat so they're they're actually really really neat creatures anyways um this this guy is what our art forms used to be made out of. Uh, they would make uh, anywhere from pendants to uh, to earrings to um, even the even the scraps of shell were mixed with mud and plaster, and they would make houses out of it. Um, this inside part here, the spiral, the inner spiral, they would actually chop that up in little sections and make beads out of it, um, called konawa. Um, and even, uh, you know, they would use like smaller ones like this one. They would actually drill a hole here and have a stick running through. And this actually became a hoe that you would use uh, when it came time to, um, to break up the ground for gardening. So a very, very useful creature. Um, this is only found in the Gulf of Mexico. Only place in the entire world where you can find lightning whelk. So a, a very, very special animal. So one of the particular things they used to make out of these guys is medicine cups. This was a t this was a very very sacred tool that medicine men and chiefs and leaders would use to dip the medicine 
uh, like a herbal herbal tea almost, and then to, to they would drink out of it during ceremonies. So I've made a replica of what she, of what that might look like, and this is a, my rendition of a medicine cup. And as you can see, the difference here, the spot, the spiral is kind of kept, but all those spikes and all that rough rough outer texture has to be smoothed down in order for me to be able to carve on it. The design that I picked is a very ancient design. You see a lot of spirals. Um, a lot of connection, a lot of movement. The pattern around around here is indicative of a serpent. Um, and then, like I talked about, in the uh, the beads that they make out of spiral. These are actually beads that I've made from the spiral of the inside of a lightning well. So really, really cool. These took about six weeks to make after being tumbled and polishing. Um, it's a very, very time consuming. And so that that string right there represents uh, one very, very large lightning whelk. So you can imagine um, when you see these loops and loops and loops of beads, you know, three and four strands that are 45 inches long, how many shells it took to make that strand. So I've also cut out the spiral. You see the inside of this one as opposed to the inside of this one. So it took a lot of work, um, but I'm very, very proud of this piece here. Um, and this is more of like a replica, replica piece. Now, to show you a little bit more about my art, I, I do work with shells from all over the world. That's one really, really cool thing about what I do, and I enjoy learning. Um, so this this particular shell is black lip mother of pearl. This guy is what you grow, what grows the very, very expensive Tahitian pearls, the black pearls that you see that cost a lot of money, but depending on their grade. So this they almost have like a bark that grows in layers um, on the top of them. And on the inside, shiny. And so this one, of course, would have two sides on it and would make a sandwich, and then the creature lives inside of them, filter feeding. Um, and the pearls grow when there's like little bits of sand um, that get stuck, and then the creature polishes them over time. So when out of the pearl shell, I made this piece here featuring uh, hummingbirds and a floral design with a tribal border. So you can see this piece doesn't really have a lot of the ancient motifs like it like the cup does, but uh, I, I love to do nature as well because we can learn a lot from studying. And so this piece right here is actually carved on the outside of the shell. So before you carve pearl, all this bark has to be grinded and smooth and polished off just before you can even begin your piece. And I have a couple other pieces to show you. Um, this is already a chunk of melon shell. This is a big, big, big creature. Um, it's usually about this big in size, I don't know, maybe 12 to 14 inches long. Uh, it is another carnivorous creature from the Indian Ocean uh, near the Philippines it's called melon shell. It's got a very, very beige shell. Um, and I have a couple pieces made out of it. Now this piece here features a tribal design that's from here in Alabama, from Moundville. Um, and it's a very very neat piece you see that it's right where i didn't use any stain like the like the lightning well cup but i just use a natural color of the shell to enhance it and then what's really cool about these is you can actually make them translucent so you see how the light kind of kind of catches through the back and so that is a, i love these pieces because they're a combination of of old plus plus uh, individuality and here's another piece that I made from melon shell featuring uh, butterflies and then the four directions. Again, this one's carved in the same way using the top of the melon shell um, to release that translucent back that translucent background. So yeah, I really love what uh, I really enjoy what I do. Um, it gives me a lot of peace satisfaction. Um, and you know being able to make heirlooms for, for families is uh, extremely honoring to me. So Today, I'm going to be walking you through the different steps. We're going to go down. We're going to go all the way from cutting shell to drawing your design out to carving your design. Um, and then uh, how to stain it and then string it. So enjoy and stick around. All right. So uh, what we're going what we're about to do is I've got a pencil, a, a circle stencil. Um and and a piece of melon shell which i'm going to be using to carve my piece out of so uh, i didn't want to show it would take too much time to break down an entire shell so i'm just going to focus on this one piece here
and show you how to basically make a medallion or a gorget. Now, the, the design that we're going to be doing is going to be similar to this. This is a little bit uh, fancier, but this, is, this design is called the Muskogee Knot. Um, it's a very, very old design that shows the connection of Muskogee people, how they, how we, we, we help each other out and depend on each other, um, and that makes us all connected. So that's the, that's the design that we're going to be using today uh, for our piece. So basically, all you do is you put your shell piece down, and you press on your stencil, and you kind of let the piece dictate how big it's going to be. So like if I... You know, if I put this piece up to this stencil here, it's too the, the shell piece is too small. So we're going to go as big as we can, which is about right here. And you press down. And draw. And so I've got a really, really dark circle that's going to work for to cut my shell. Now, before I officially draw my design out, I'm going to get this cut using a, uh, a, a diamond wet saw. All right, so we're all set up here. We've got our diamond diamond blade on. And as you see, this is water here. Um, even in the old days, uh, you know, a long, long time ago, the, uh, the indigenous peoples would use uh, water and sand to cut this shell. Um, even the, the even the Aztec and Mayan people had almost like almost like la, uh, uh, laboratory shops set up where they could where they could cut this stuff with uh, using hand wheels. They even had found record of of uh, using the stomach acid or plant acid to help eat at the enamel at the shell, uh, not a stomach acid from an alligator, uh, to help weaken the shell's enamel so that it would be easier to cut through. So we're going to be using this uh, this wet blade here to cut this circle out of the melon shell. So, it's not perfect, but I basically have a disc cut out. Um, I drew on the back of the shell. We'll actually be using the inside to draw our design. And it's, if, and it's not perfect, and that's fine because I'm going to go back when it comes time to do my border work. We'll clean that up and make it a, a little bit prettier. So, now it's ready to be drawn on. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, basically draw out the guidelines uh, for this piece. Um, again, we've got a stir circle stencil set here with different um, diameters and then a pencil. And that's all we need to get this done. So what I do is I place this down. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a pretty much on the spot. I'm going to divide this circle into four equal pieces, okay? So kids, always study geometry. It's in everything that you do. Don't ever say, I'm never going to use this in real life. <laughs> All right, so I've got my, um, 
I've got my circle divided into four parts. And now I'm going to place a stencil down to give me some barriers. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So basically you're kind of deciding how big your main design is going to be. I think that looks about right. So you put your pencil down, press firmly on the outside of the stencil, and that gives you that, almost like a bullseye. Okay, so now we're going to try, I'm going to uh, freehand a couple more rounds because that, that's going to help us with our design. I won't freehand, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and use a stencil. All right, so I'm going to make little, little marks here, kind of going around the circle. And so I've got those, now I'm going to start connecting them. So you can imagine just seeing this process when I'm getting ready for an art show or a festival, you know, and I'm making um, pieces to sell is how much work goes into it. Some days, I'll, sometimes I'll spend all day cutting, just nothing but cutting. And the next day I go nothing but prepping, you know, rounding corners and chopping off bad pieces. And then the next day I'll spend nothing but drawing. So it's quite a process that, that takes a lot of time, but you know, it's definitely something that I enjoy doing a lot. All right, so this next one, I'm also gonna try and freehand. And that's the beauty about it. Uh, you know, this stuff is not, you're not using a laser. You're not using um, any kind of like insanely specific equipment. You're just kind of eyeballing it. And you know, the more and more I've done, the better and better I, I get at, at creating um, the the lines that I need. But, you know, in actuality, you know, none of them is perfect. So I've kind of got my guidelines down there. You can see they're kind of rough, and that's okay. Um, we can go with that. Now, you see how this, this border is not perfect. I've got some pieces here. I'm going to have to smooth that off, but I'm going to go ahead and draw some, some lines for reference on my border as well. I'm gonna use an old school border, one that one that you would see if you were to look up a lot of the artifacts, the shell artifacts from the southeast here in Alabama, um, from the mound builders, then you would see this border used a lot. Okay, so that's basically it. Now we're ready for our main design. And I, you know, I've done this, this design so much where I can draw without even looking at a picture. Um, so we're going to strengthen the dark, strengthen the, the, the cross in the middle. Then you're going to come here, spin, here, spin, here, spin, here. Now I'm ready for my loops and I've got my circle. So my circle works is like a a boundary saying I know that that's where my, my piece has to meet. All right, then um, there's some little dots right there. And now this piece is ready to carve. Uh, depending on if you wanted to do this design, you can also come here and make some additional lines inside. Mine kind of work as guidelines. I don't ever really follow a pattern 100%, but they just kind of give me an idea of where to carve. So now we're ready to get this going and start turning it into, into art. All right, so now we're ready to start carving. Uh, the piece that I have in front of you is a similar to a Dremel tool. Um, they, it's called a rotary tool. It spins really, really high. As you can see, I've got a bit on the end. This bit is actually uh, 
one that dentists use to work on uh, when they're doing dental work. So you're talking about uh, a burr that's you know smaller than the, the tip of a pencil. So that's what I use to engrave. I'm actually going to use one even smaller than this when I get down to the design. So now you're getting ready to hear a sound. Uh, it's going to sound like a vacuum. That is an actual vacuum that I use to keep dust out of my face. Um, it is toxic, so we want to make sure that we try to uh, practice safety whenever we can. All right, so I'm going to turn it on and get going. The first thing I'm going to do is going to work on my guidelines. I notice that I'm picking up my blade so that it hits the shell at almost around a 45 degree angle. And I don't try to carve this circle all in one touch. I'm doing piece. I'm, I'm doing a little bit and then turning, a little bit and then turning. That's how you actually create your circle to where it doesn't um, look all wobbly. I'm gonna get the rest of these. I'm gonna get the rest of these circles um, done, and that my more my outlines done, and then I'll show you a little bit more of the detail work in just a minute. All right, now I've got um, I fixed my border. I fixed um, I got all my circles done, and now I'm gonna finish up some of the detail, some of the detail lines and then uh, start putting some putting some more intricate um, designs in. So I'm using the same, still the same work. So basically here, I'm gonna do some chalk. This is going to look like scallops, like lace when I'm done. So you're just making little chops and little chops. I don't try to keep that bit down too long. Because once it starts sink, sinking into that shell, you can, uh, it's going to go too deep and make your lines look, look uh, off. Now notice I'm still keeping my hand upright. That's one of the hard things about shell carving is that, you know, when I'm carved for eight, nine hours a day, you know, it, it's a lot of, a lot of stress on my hands. And so... Um, you know, my muscles get, my hands get really, really tired. All right, so I finished up my chops. I'll do one more. And I'm going to start doing my other designs here for the Muskogee knot.
start off. Start. I'll keep. I'll keep working on these outlines and stuff, and um, come right back to finish it up. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start. Um, start turning, putting a little more chunks of the. I'm gonna take out chunks of the scallops here to give it almost like a lace look. And I'm gonna go around and remove a lot of this material on the border to give it a 3D look. So now I'm laying my bit flat. That's making a deeper hole in the shell. That's exactly the size of my bird. starting to see the design take shape. Alright, now I'm going to switch to a Dremel tool. Now these are diamond bird. They're big, big guys. Um, and they're, they're going to remove, they're going to rem remove material a lot faster than my detail. So you can see I've got some, some separation there between the border and uh, the scallops. So now what I'm going to come back and do is feather this part here with just a whole bunch of lines at one time. And that's going to create a really nice pattern once we add the stain to it. So I'm going to get that done and I'll come right back. All right, I cleaned it up. Um, I, I went ahead and uh, drilled my holes in it to be strung up as a necklace. So now what I'm going to do is use something called st steel wool. This is used a lot uh, when people want to remove something that's uh, to make something really, really smooth. It's a polishing material. kind of looks like a metal fuzz. So I'm going to use that. And that's going to kind of work to, to get rid of my mistakes, extra bit of chunk that's on the shell um, where I've made cuts. It also helped make it make some of the areas, the exposed areas shinier. I'm going to go around this edge with the steel wool as well. And this helps the shell not get caught on, uh, you know, clothing or you know, if you're wearing wearing earrings that I show, you do this a lot so that people it doesn't get catch people's hair. Hair it makes the edges smooth so that um, they're not they don't catch. So now that's also removing a lot of the pencil mark. Now I'm gonna go back with an eraser, just a regular old uh, you know school eraser, 
and get rid of all that. So after I race it, we're almost done, but I've discovered that I missed the line right here. So I'm gonna fix that and then we'll be ready to stain it and see what the final product looks like. All right, now we are completely finished uh, with carving this piece. You can kind of see the design. It's got it's got a lot of enhancement based because how how deep I went into the shell with my with my carving. Um, and, and some shell, you know, you don't really need to stain to make it uh, to make the design stand out. A lot of shell has natural coloration in it. Um, the deeper you go into the shell, the more the more coloration is revealed. But this this melon shell is uh, a little bit plain right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, an a natural a natural stain that's got a lot of like charcoal and stuff in it um to help enhance that design a long time ago what they would do is use stuff like charcoal mixed with animal fat to make a paste and that would make like a deep deep paint um, there's a lot of different uh things in nature that give us color as well uh red ochre from uh from paint rocks as some people call them when you bust that up it has like a a, a brick red look to it you can use that for coloration um, there's a lot of plants that may give off yellow stains. So there's all kind of stuff that was used, uh, but we're going to use black because that was a predominant color from, uh, from the, uh, ancient pieces. So basically I'm just going to get a little bit on my finger here. It's really, really thick paint, not like a acrylic or watercolor. And I'm going to put that down on the design and I'm just going to, I'm going to use a toothbrush actually to make sure that that design gets in all those crevices that I carved. Now, as you can see, I'm covering the whole shell. Um, you might think that's crazy, but what's gonna happen is where I didn't carve will actually wipe off very easily. The paint is actually going to sit in uh, the, the crevices that I, that I carved and it will be removed using good old fashioned baby wipes. If you don't have baby wipes, just a wet cloth will work too. So you can start to see that design pop out where I carved and it's leaving, uh, leaving the mark and then wiping off fairly easily. bits off my fingers here and there is your final product all right so that takes you from all the way from a piece of shell to a design that could be worn um, again this this design is called the uh, Muskogee knot you represent there's a lot of representation in there I really hope you've enjoyed my presentation today. I've enjoyed uh, getting to teach this, uh, do this, demonstrate this virtual workshop. And um, if you if you want to find out find out more about my art, you can you can go to Instagram um, and look up at Emaya Creations E M A Y E underscore Creations. So hope you all have a great uh, a great rest of your day, and um, hope to hear from you soon. Take care.